It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. The significance of the resurrection is determined by the nature of his death. In other words, if you don't know why Jesus died, what happened when he died, then you see his resurrection as just his victory. But the significance of the resurrection of Christ is what? When he took your sin, you were declared righteous when he's raised from the dead. Are y'all still here? Amen. Or here's the way Dad Hagen said it. He said... Too many Christians stop at the cross. And you got to go to the cross. You got to see what happened on the cross. And what happened on the cross determines your understanding of what happened when he's raised from the dead. Because if the cross was just his death, then the resurrection is just his resurrection. But if the cross was your death and your curse and your sin, then the resurrection was your victory and your triumph and your blessing. Y'all still in here? So, uh, look look at it this way, because you can can never leave the cross. He says the blood of his cross. But if you think about it, the blood of Jesus is not just the blood of his cross. Why? Because Hebrews 9, 12 says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place and he obtained eternal redemption for us. So the blood of his cross is also the blood of his resurrection and the blood of his triumph. And that blood is in the holy place right now in the presence of God and testifies of a righteousness that God produced for you and declares you not guilty. Come on, it is the mercy of God and the grace of God. So the blood of his cross is also the blood of his triumph and his resurrection. It's actually the blood that's in the holy place. Matter of fact, if you meditate on the blood, believe, mix faith with the blood, it'll always take you there. I said, if you meditate on the blood of Jesus, go over those scriptures, meditate on that, it will always take you there. Not just where he started, it'll take you where he finished. Amen. It's the blood of his triumph. He entered in once into the holy place. He obtained what? Eternal redemption for who? For us. One translation says he secured our permanent deliverance. Oh, my, my, my. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Through his blood, through the precious blood of Jesus. So let me go back here just for a second. In other words, I heard Dad Hagen say this. I thought it's very interesting that many Christians stop at the cross. He says, don't stop at the cross. Go on to the triumph of Christ. Come on, that gives you a sense of victory and triumph, all right? He said, but don't stop at the resurrection. Go on to Pentecost and get filled with the Holy Spirit. How many know that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is a proof of the resurrection of Christ? All right, we'll try that one more time because I think some of y'all are just looking at me. I said, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit Come on, and people being filled with the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up and preached, and he said, (laughs) he said, this which you see and hear came from the resurrection of Christ that he is alive. In other words, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit is a proof that Jesus is alive. Praise the Lord. Amen. Matter of fact, when Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, I asked the Lord one time, why Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost. I was reading that and I thought, now Peter's tough to preach. Now why is he preaching? How many other people could be preaching? And why is Peter preaching? 
All right? I said, because other guys could be preaching, Peter should be like in minister's rehab because he just denied the Lord three times. Why is he preaching? Shouldn't you pick somebody else to be preaching? How many ever wondered why somebody preaching, somebody else ought to be preaching? I right, said, Peter's preaching, why is he preaching? And then when Peter stood up to preach on the day of Pentecost, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, he never mentioned his failure. It must have been removed from his memory. Woo, man, that means when Jesus took his blood into heaven itself and obtained eternal redemption for us and the Holy Spirit. Woo, come on. The Holy Spirit magnifies Jesus. Jesus got so big, he totally forgot his failure. It removed from his memory. Oh. Come on, because the devil will say, you're going to smell like that, you know, for the rest of your life. Come on, you have to keep that. You say, no, no, by the blood of Jesus, my faith is in his blood. I said, by faith in his blood. My faith is in his blood. You say, well, I, I don't feel like that. No, faith comes first. The feelings will show up later. Let's try that again. I said, you say, well, I, you don't know how I feel. Since when was you supposed to be walked by your feelings anyhow? In other words, faith comes first. Feelings will show up later. Praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? So the blood of Jesus not only removes sin, removes sin consciousness. So Peter stood up to preach and never mentioned denying the Lord. He wasn't depressed about it. Oh, come on now. Jesus didn't say, well, you ought to feel bad about that. I'm going through all that trouble and you ought to feel bad about that. Well, I'm going through that trouble and you just denied me. I ought to slap you right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> now how many of you ever felt that way about someone? I ought to slap you right now. I mean, glad God's not like that. Come on, the blood of Jesus removed Peter, and he stood up and preached on the day of Pentecost and never mentioned his past. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. All right, so how many of y'all know where we're going? We're going from the cross, what happened on the cross? We're going to the resurrection, what happened when Christ was raised from the dead, and now we're over here being filled with the Holy Spirit. So keep going. Come on, you see somebody talking about the cross. You say, that's great, that's great, that's great. Uh, keep going. Let's go one more place over here. Oh, look at the resurrection and the triumph of Christ. He's alive. Come on. He ain't hanging on your wall. <laughs> I said, he's alive. Amen. You know what happened on the cross. Go on the resurrection, then go on where? Go to Pentecost. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. But don't stop there. Oh, some people still stuck there, you know. I said, don't stop there. Go on to Paul's revelation. Come on, I said, don't stop there. Go on to Paul's revelation and see who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, the authority you have as a believer. Come on, go all the way to who you are in Christ. I'll stay with me here. All right, go back to Colossians 1.20. I just wanted to explain that. Everybody say thank you. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Colossians chapter 1. <laughs> I have to preach every day, so I might as well enjoy it. My daddy always said, my daddy passed it over 50 years, so he always said it. He said, if you don't enjoy your own preaching, you're in bad shape. <laughs> and you can see some people in there like, my Lord, they don't even like what they're saying themselves. Why am I supposed to like it? <laughs> One thing I appreciate about Brother Copeland, he enjoys what he preaches. He's like, ah! Man, if it don't light you up, it ain't going to light nobody else up. <laughs> All right, Colossians 1 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, underline, underline that. Uh, having made peace through the blood, everybody say, through the blood, blood of his cross, by him or in him, in Christ. He says, to reconcile all things to himself, whether they're things in the earth or things in heaven, that means nothing's beyond his restoration. Reconciliation. Reconciliation means restored to favor, restored to fellowship. Verse 21. 
And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has what? Reconciled. What's that mean? Restored to fellowship with God. And restored to what? Favor and the blessing of God. He says now. Everybody say now. now. Everybody say now. now. <laughs> I've been restored to fellowship Amen. with God and to the favor of God. All right, got to get to the next verse. In the body, come on, of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Amen. All right. He said the purpose of this through the blood of Christ is to present you what? Holy, unblameable, and unreprovable. When it says in his sight, that means before him are in his presence. Amen. In his presence. In other words, the blood of Jesus, the blood of his cross. He said, somebody said this way, the highest, the crowning achievement of the plan of redemption was to bring you into the holiest, right in the presence of God without a sense of sin or guilt or inferiority. Amen. All right, let's try this one more time. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Amen. Amen. You ought to tell somebody, I'm going to be working on this for about 40 years. And in other words, you can just get stronger and more real. Registers on your heart. All right, the crowning achievement of the plan of redemption is to do what? To bring us in his presence before him in the holy place. All right, now I'm going to say this here. Listen close. When you die and go to heaven should not be the first time you've been there. Now, where I got that from, it says you're going to go right in the Holy You don't have to wait till you die to do that. Amen. You go by the blood. In other words, you can have that conscience. Paul, come on. He said, I went third heaven. Right. A man in Christ did that. That means you can get so filled with the Holy Spirit, draw near to God in the holiest in his presence. Come on. Yes, yes. So you say, well, I know where I'm at. Come on. Amen. It ain't just Dallas and Fort Worth. Right. In his presence. Praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> I laughed one time because I was reading Isaiah. Isaiah, I think, verse, uh, verse uh, chapter 6. Uh, Isaiah where he said, uh, in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord. So that kind of tripped me in my little brain, you know. I was like, <laughs> because you would think in the year that King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. <laughs> but Isaiah said, he died and I saw the Lord. All right, let's keep moving here. <laughs> so apparently, you don't have to wait till you die. So now, by the blood of Jesus, come on, we have boldness in His presence, and it says this. Here's one of my favorite translations. He says, "What does it say? Blameless, holy, blameless, unreprovable, right? Unblameable, holy, unblameable, unreprovable in His sight." In his presence. All right. Another translation says, and you're standing there before him with nothing left against you. Nothing he could even chide you for or correct you for. In other words, he didn't bring you there so he could whoop you. He didn't bring you there to straighten you out. He brought you there because he loves you. Come on now. And he produced that through the blood of Jesus to bring you right back into fellowship with God. That the blood of Jesus, we draw near, it says in Hebrews 10, 22, with a true heart in full assurance of faith. We draw near, Hebrews 10, 22, with a true heart, full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our body washed with pure water. Man, he's talking about even getting the smell off your body. Amen. Don't look at anybody right now. He says, he says, he says the blood of Jesus will not only remove sin or guilt, but it literally will cleanse your body Amen. With, with living water. Amen. Come on, even your body is happy when you get in the presence of God. Amen. Not just your spirit, even your body's going, thank you for that, I appreciate that so much. Amen. 
So you come boldly by the blood right into the holiest. Now listen close. Here's something Dad Hagen said, and I want you to understand what he means. He said, faith trembles in the darkness of broken fellowship. In other words, we have faith in God, faith in the Word, faith in the blood of Jesus. He said, but your faith is designed to bring you into fellowship with God so that your confession comes out of that fellowship with the Father. Wow. So you're not just saying things. Come on. You're living in constant consciousness of God. Amen. God conscious on the inside. Yeah. Amen. So that, that faith is strong when it's in fellowship with the Father. Amen. All right? All right, go back to Colossians 1, 20 through 22. So he says, he says, you stand there before him, what? Holy, unblameable, and un what? Unreprovable. Unblameable. That's what we call God has no fault insurance. In other words, it don't matter whose fault it was, you're covered. So the blood of Jesus removes a sense of sin or guilt or shame and blame. Come on, that happened. If I hadn't done this, come on, if I'd done this, I'd done that. And so you live with that accusation or that blame. Y'all with me? Yeah. Amen. And we pastored for over 20 years. And so uh, one, of us, one of our staff members, um, uh, the couple, husband and wife, three children, uh, took off to go on a, a, a retreat, visit their family, you know, a wedding, something like that. Well, it's a real, real quick trip. So they would like drive all night, you know, plan on driving and save money, you know, and stay at a hotel. And so what happened on the way back was uh, the wife was driving and the husband's laying in the back of the van with one of the daughters and the other two daughters were in their seats and they're driving two or three o'clock in the morning. Well, the wife ran off the road, tried to adjust. She, she went to sleep and, and, and rolled the van and threw the husband out on the highway and that daughter and killed both of them. Oh my. Well, you know, there's a lot more that goes to the story. I'm just giving you this part. So she calls our house. That's back in the days where you had, uh, you know, the voice recorder, you know. Somebody leave a message and you could hear the message. So it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And we hear her voice, and she is like screaming. It is like torment and torture. Pastor, I've done something horrible, I've done something terrible. She said, I've killed my husband and the middle daughter. She is screaming. Wow, man, we were in the middle of the night. We get up, we go out there and do the funerals. Well, <clears throat> When she got back to our church, she was still on staff, but she's in a, in a terrible condition, terrible mental, emotional condition. So she would, uh, um, we'd catch her during the service and she'd be out in the flower bed around the church in the, uh, the bushes out there hiding, balled up like this, just crying her eyes up. And so every service I'd get up and I'd say, where's she at? Where's she at? I'm looking for her. Because I told her, you'll never be cured. You'll never be healed unless you stay here in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Stay right here. Stay close. So I'd make her sit up close. She'd be in there, still rough. Man, that went on for a few weeks, still rough. She's having a hard time dealing with the guilt and the shame and the blame. Yes. I mean, it looked like it's going to drive her crazy. Right. She'll never get over that, right? So she's going on and on. This is going to be my whole life. You know, this, I'm going to have these pictures of torment going on. And so we were in one of the meetings. I made sure she was sitting up close to the front. And right in the middle of that meeting, the Holy Spirit told me, you tell her that I said it is not her fault. Well, you know, I'm just a regular person. So my mind said, well, it is kind of her fault. How I many ever had that thought? Yeah. I mean, you're looking at it from the natural side. You're like, I can't from. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I told you, tell her it is not her fault. 
And if I declare her not guilty, and if I declare it's not her fault, who are you to say anything else about that? Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody in the church knows the situation. I called her out. I said, come up here. I said, the Lord, come on, I'm real bold now, the anointing came on. I mean, you get bold when the anointing come on, you're like, you're like I'm going to agree with God now. I mean, I like to go ahead and agree with God instead of arguing. So I said, come up here, boy. She came up there. I said, the Lord just told me to tell you it is not your fault. And she went, oh. And that whole weight totally lifted from her, set her free. If God declares you not guilty, he's got some no fault insurance. It don't matter what it looks like because the devil will try to blame you and shame you and accuse you. Come on for the next 30 years. But the moment the blood of Jesus is applied, you can say, I am declared. Come on, and my record has been expunged and my memory has been cleansed and the shame is gone and the guilt is gone. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm qualified to receive God's best blessing. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries' Faith for Every Nation. Have you ever dealt with shame or guilt and felt like you would never measure up? When you understand you have God's divine approval on your life, it sets you free from a sense of rejection, inadequacy, or inferiority. When you know you're approved by God, you are then free to receive God's best blessings and follow His plan for your life. In this four CD set, Divine Approval, Pastor Mark Hankins will help you understand your divine approval. The radical revelation of righteousness Righteousness is a free gift from God. When you're born again, you have first-class righteousness. You are 100% righteous. With this offer, we'll also send you the book, Divine Approval, Understanding Righteousness. Pastor Mark will help you understand that righteousness is a reality produced for us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop looking for approval and acceptance in this world. Receive your divine approval today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. You know, so many people suffer with the pain of regret and shame and guilt, maybe failures, past failures, and in that, they feel like they cannot move forward and they feel like they don't have the approval of anyone else. So I just cannot move forward in what God has for me. But you know, the blood of Jesus washes us clean from the past, from failure, from every mistake, and it can wash us clean from guilt and shame. So we don't have to live under the lies of the enemy. And he keeps trying to show us the picture of the past and the picture of the failure and the picture of the shame and the guilt. But we don't have to live in that because we have God's divine approval. And if we have God's approval, we don't need anyone else's approval because he has approved of us. So today I wanna to encourage you to get this book, Divine Approval. And this will help you and encourage you and keep you on the right path to see yourself, your identity in Christ, to see yourself that you have been made righteous. And it doesn't matter what the past holds. It doesn't matter what has happened in the past, where you went wrong, because you have been washed clean. You have been made righteous and God has approved of you. And if God approves of you, you have a bright future. So if you want to get that book today, you can look at the information on the screen you can call or go to the website i encourage you to do that today we want to thank all the mark and trina hankins ministries partners amen you have made this ministry possible praise the and Lord. the word is working mightily here amen.
For over 40 years, our desire has been to take the foundational truths we've learned from our parents to believers. We've felt an acceleration of that assignment, and now more than ever, we want to take the message of faith that transformed our lives to as many people, churches, cities, and nations as possible. We've been to over 30 countries, but many of them again and again, inspired by the word of faith, are still working. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through the website, social media, the app, and publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Kenneth Hagin said, in the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. It's amazing to hear stories of people who've received our books in very remote places, such as prisons, deep in the bush of Africa, and many other distant lands. Our desire is to have our books translated and distributed in as many languages as possible. These books can be left with pastors and leaders who in turn can share the books with others. We believe people's faith will be ignited for many generations to come. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. When they are strong in faith, they are powerful. We like to picture the distribution of the word like passing out ammunition to people. Once people have the right ammo, they're able to take their authority in Christ, live victorious, and make an impact in their world. The books are so instrumental in teaching because even if it's just one book, they can read that book and then they pass it on. That message is such a tool that can go where we can't go. The Lord continues to open the doors to new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in a hundred different languages. Each individual is so valuable to Jesus that He died for each and every one. And if just one person can get a hold of the word of faith in any village, any city, any country, and in any nation, that one person can change their world. The exciting thing is, when we distribute the word that God gave us, there are people God joins to us to help, and we all become partners in doing this assignment. We could not do what we're doing without our partners, and we thank God for every man, woman, and even teenager that God has joined to us to help fulfill our call. When everybody pulls together, we're able to preach the word, not only in places like Africa and India, but also through avenues such as books, CDs, TV, social media, the app, and the website. We're so thankful for our partners, and somebody on the other side of the world is telling them, thank you. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.